Okay, so in this video, I want to talk about uh, using another uh, pre-built Unity asset for uh, scene prototyping or game prototyping. Um, in this case, I'm talking about the 3D Game Kit Lite, which you can download from the asset store. Um, it's basically a version of the 3D Game Kit, and there are tutorials online. I'll show you those. So there's a... Um, if you go to learnunity.com project 3D game kit light, it's um, a version of the 3D game and it has these tutorials that, uh, with uh, walkthroughs of how the um, kit works. And it's just a, a useful asset for being able to build um, third person kind of action adventure game. There's um, a more full fledged version of it with more assets that uh, you can find the game kit in the asset store um, here. So if you go 3D game, I should find it in the search. It's this asset. Looks like kind of an alien planet. Um, and it's got a lot of cool assets in it. It's basically the same assets as the game kit lied, except it's 2.2 gigs in size. So uh, today I want to show you uh, using the light kit, which is only 80, 80 megs, 82 megs or something like that. You can download and import that into your scene. And when you first come into the scene, um, it should open up into, go to assets, uh, this example scene, which is um, kind of a tutorial that has all of the interactables in the scene. Uh, with some uh, uh, kind of a tutorial that shows how uh, to play a game and then actually has like a game level here for you to solve. And I want to go into this in particular and just show um, how this kit is designed to be used uh, in terms of modeling and uh, also putting new characters into it and how the uh, components work. If you want to find out more about the kit, you can click on this README in the 3D Game Kit Lite, or if you've downloaded a 3D game, it'll have its own README, and you can go to read the manual, and that will take you to this Unity uh, page where you can go through the process of this tutorial that'll teach you everything you need. On top of that, let me hide this. Um, you can go into the documentation; it's pretty well documented. Um, get out of art here and then there's documentation and there's these um, getting started which is a PDF and it's we'll talk about how to uh, set the scene up same probably the same PDF for both the 3d game kit and the 3d game kit light and then it's got component documentation for all of the scripts so you've got a good amount of documentation for pretty much anything you need in this what I want to talk about today that um, I don't know if they go into detail in, in the documentation about is some of the aspects of what ships with this. So if you um, install the 3D game kit or the 3D game kit light, when you get this kit tools, it's going to have this create new scene. So we'll go ahead and make a new scene just to show how that goes. We'll call this uh, tutorial new character and hit create. And it's going to basically look similar to what I just had, which was the scene. So it says tutorial new character here. It creates all of this stuff in the um, hierarchy with your character. In this case, she's called Ellen. And this simple flat plane, which is actually pro uh, part of a prefab that ships or a package that ships with the 3D game kit, which is called Pro Builder. It's also got poly brush and this filter LOD. So under the tools that come with this, um, you get Pro Builder, and you can. I'll show. I'm going to go into how that works once I actually show you how to get a character into this. So here's our character. Let me just play and show you how it works. I've gone and modified the um, filter so it's got this kind of brown uh, '70s tint to it. But you can see it's a third person character. She's got a GUI of health. She can jump. 
She runs around in different directions. She kind of has that little slide when she goes the other way. This is kind of nice. The other nice thing is you can change direction mid-jump, which is handy for control in a platformer. And she's got, if you click the mouse, she's got this uh, staff that she can hit with, and she can chain attacks like that. Uh, now, if you look at her character, but if you go into art in this uh, 3D game kit folder, the first uh, folder is art, and go into models, characters, and the, the, the light ships with um, Chomper, which is a, an AI um, kind of lizard character like that. And then there's a spitter, which looks similar, a different color, but the same kind of creature. Um, I will let me delete those. Chomper. Um, but it, Ellen is the main character here. And if you look at her setup, the big thing about getting other characters into it is that she has a generic rig. Uh, that's And also her skeleton is um, has all of these preset Ellen's in front of it. Ellen underscore skeleton, uh, Ellen root, etc. Um, which makes, it's going to make it difficult to use her character controller with somebody like the bender that I've shown in a previous uh, prototyping tutorial. So if I go to characters, uh, I've imported our bender model into this here. So I'm just going to pull them in there. This is just the default to FBX as it would export. So we need to, um, I'm going to rotate them around because some of these things that we're going to, um, I'm just holding down control so we can snap them on increments. So I've just rotated them 140 degrees or 180 degrees. And I want to uh, get his materials fixed real quick. So we're going to go through the process of converting him, which uh, he's got a generic rig. The problem is, is like when you use a generic rig, if you select his avatar, right now it's generic, um, his, his bones are different. They'll be named differently. So you can't transfer anything in terms of her character control or the animations to him. You base, I'm going to show you how you can, though. It's not easy to do, but I'm going to take you through the process of doing it. She's generic. He's generic. What we want to do is, um, in order to get them to transfer, we have to go through the mech anim process, and it's kind of a long roundabout thing. But the first thing we'll do is um, set him to humanoid, create from this model, apply, and that's all we'll need to do for now. So now he's got his humanoid rig. Uh, let's extract his materials so we can modify them. Extract from prefab, and I'll just put them here in the same folder. So now his materials um, I can modify. I want to um, turn on emission like I did in the previous, and then just do his teeth for the emission. Uh, I'll make this white, and we'll give him a bit of a um, yellow color on the teeth. I'm going to, actually I've gone and saved the color that I want as a, a swatch here. So if you have a color that you want to transfer between materials to get them to match up, um, pick it, and then on swatches just click on this new option and then it'll create a swatch. So that way you'll have it to transfer to something else. Um, so if we select that, so now you can see is that he's emitting um, this light, and we may not want, yeah, we do want that texture on the teeth so that we get the black, and that way the black won't emit, and then maybe, yeah, if we want it to be a flat, the flat color, just a color map, we can take the teeth from the diffuse or the albedo from white to black. That way we're only getting the emission color, like it's uh, an LED screen. And then we can do the same with our eye white. Um, take that down to black and turn on emission. Go to our color and select our swatch. So now the colors match. Um, and then on the metal, we need to turn on 
italic and give it some smoothness, not too much. Keep them a little rough, kind of dented. And then on the gasket, we need to also, don't turn on the metallic, just give it a little bit of a shine. And the, well, on the eye black, we don't want that because we want it to be completely dark. Okay, so now his materials are set up. We've got his rig, again, set as a humanoid rig. We need to um, copy her parts, all of these scripts, over to him. So let's go ahead and do that. Copy, components, and then paste. Again, just paste on top as new. Copy the uh, damageable script. And paste, component is new. Um, these scripts are set up for his player control, third person, her player control, third person, and um, provide feedback so that you can update the GUI, the health menu, etc. Um, and you can look into the uh, documentation if you want to find out more about that. Copy, and this is, um, we've got all of these um, noises and uh, stuff which are kind of embedded but playing from audio sources here in the uh, default scene. So we can copy this and paste. Component is new. Um, and then we need one more. This target distributor. Copy components and paste component is new. Now to get him to interact with stuff, we need to put him in his layer to be player. Um, say yes to children. That updates that. He's going to need a character controller. We're just going to go ahead and set it to um, this Ellen for now, even though it's not going to work because the character animations that are in that controller, the ones that are targeted, are set up for this generic, so he won't animate. Um, and now, if you look at her character, this, it's got this head target in it. And I don't know if this is a spacer. It's a null object. It's at her feet. Um, it, I think they're just spacers for um, null spacers to kind of like organize these objects into different parts. Why? I don't know. <laughs> But uh, we'll go ahead and just copy them anyway. So we're going to copy the head target, the spacer, the trail effect, the staff, and respawn particles, and this. We don't need her body and skeleton. And then we want the audio sources, this pistol root, and the shield. So we'll copy those. And then we will select his character. I'm going to put it into under characters here so that they're at the same level. Paste. It's not going to put them under him, because even though we had him selected, we can take those and drag them until he's selected, and that will put them in him in that way. And then we can drag the armature and the bender and put them under there. Um, no, we're not. And it's a prefab, so we'll just leave them there. It's not going to harm it. Um, this doesn't matter if it has a different name. When we copied it, it was just trying to keep them sorted, so we can leave it as the same. It's just a spacer. And we got our head target, trail effect staff. Now, when we pasted those, um, they kept all of the positions that were relative to her. So um, we want to grab the ones that are in him and move them over to his model. Um, real quick, easy way to do that. Uh, we'll get them positioned, but you can see that there's sort of an angle. I don't think that the rotation matters. She has a rotation on her. Um, slight rotation on her character. Um, but what we're going to do is select his head target, 
And if you want to just see it from the top down, you can click on this arrow. If you want to see it um, orthographically so you can get it positioned just right without perspective, just click on that box. And then you can hit W, and then you can just go and put it sort of center of his head, like that. It's got this little rotation, so we can set that to zero so that it lines up, even though he's got a slight rotation. So let's, I don't know if it matters, but um, eh, we'll leave it the way it is. Um, just know that if you do have some, um, let's make sure that the head, so her head target, blue points, uh, the Z points forward, his head target, yeah, Z points forward. Um, it's in his head, because it's a head target. I'm assuming that's what the camera's looking at or targeting. Um, these these uh, blanks were just at the feet. So if we select his, we'll just put them at his feet. Uh, trail effect kind of sits out in front of him, I think. That's part of the weapon, and it doesn't really matter. We'll just sit it in front of his body like it's in front of hers. So let's go and hit the um, blue or the green for the looking at it from the top, and just shift this and put it in front of his body like that. The staff, same thing. This will be attached to a bone, but we're going to put it like where it was relative to his hand. Respawn particles, this will be at his, his feet. Just put them there for now. We're going to lower them when we get to the uh, bottom. We'll move this spacer over to him. This one I don't think we did move. And again, I don't think these spacers have anything to do other than just keeping the uh, organization here. Audio sources, moving that. Just to his physical position, and then pistol root and shield. Now, just because we're moving these doesn't mean we're doing everything that we needed to do. We're just we've copied and pasted them into him. Now we need to target um, some of the things in him and get the position. But I think we've done everything there. Let's check so you can see where the things that are at his feet like the shield, the pistol root, the audio sources, the spacer respawn particles, the staff isn't. So these four can come down to the base, the foot. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I think everything else is probably okay except for the head target might be. Just depending, I'm not sure. We'll put it right there. Uh, everything else is good. All right, so now we can go back to perspective. It's kind of trippy to watch it do that transition. And we have everything set to um, copied over. Let's hide her. I'm just going to turn her off right here so she's not in the way anymore. And let's look at... Um, what he's got on him since we copied stuff over. So um, he's got the animator, which is set to use her controller. Um, he's using his avatar, which is humanoid. So automatically there's going to be a problem um, because her controller is set up for animations that are, I'll show you the animations in a sec, but they're using the generic. So they're just not going to communicate. Um, oh, wait. If you look at her... Um, update mode and culling mode. It was set to animate physics and always animate. So you'll want to set that on him. Animate physics and always animate. Now um, the head target on her didn't have any scripts. Uh, let's look at his controller. These all stayed the same. What you just want to do is you want to see if anything that was targeted when you click on these selectables was um, 
targeted in her particular character because at some point we'll get rid of that. You just want to make sure it's targeting anything that's in the um, the scene. So the canvas stuff will all be the health canvas. That's fine. Ellen Shield, however, notice that when we clicked on, we're on him, and when we clicked on this script and said Ellen Shield, it targets her Ellen Shield, not his. So if you click here on the target, you're going to have two Ellen Shields. Okay, They're both called the same thing. I kind of want them all, and we're going to do this, see this in the animation as well. You don't want to change the names before you go to do this, or else you have to go and search through this and find it. And if you do it this way, it'll just, and there's only two, you'll be able to see which one is not selected. And you can select this one. And then when you click here, it's going to select the Allen Shield that's under him. Okay. Then if you change its name, and I don't recommend changing its name because who knows if there's a script that might be hard coded to target or something like that, or if it's getting targeted somewhere else. It should auto-translate if you do change the name, but just in case, leave it the same. It doesn't do any harm to leave it there. And it also lets you kind of know, or somebody else, if they go and play with this scene, if you ever distribute it, that uh, where you got this from, if they're familiar with this kit. Um, so we're the canvas, the damageable set. And then if you look at more canvas, the shield here so there's two Allen shields so it's on become vulnerable and on receive damage um, so this one also needs to target the other Allen shield that's under him and here's the canvas and then there's another Allen shield so we need to target that one and just double check to make sure it's under him okay player that's good all right, so melee weapon, the references, if you select, notice that this staff weapon is targeting the staff that's under her. So we should change that to, and what I've noticed is when we've copied these, um, for some reason, I don't know why, um, this shows up white. Maybe it's a duplicate or it's some clone or instance or something, but um, it shows up white here. So that's a good indicator when you see the icon uh, show up white that it's the um, and you see here where these are set as plus so maybe that's what it is I'm not sure I'm not familiar with unity's um, interface because I haven't seen this before but I think it must be some sort of instancing that makes the icon look a little different so the blue would be the original and the white would be some reference to it um, but anyway you want to go through so yeah, this is targeting the set, this camera rig up here. That's fine. Footstep source is, like I said, down in audio sources. It's there, so that's fine. Hurt source. All of these are good. And then this target distributor is fine. Okay? So now he's set up. Ellen's turned off. Let's just see what happens. Um, so you see the camera is not targeting him and he moves when you see something like this it's a good indicator that um, you're dealing with something in the animation or the rig as opposed to because the controllers and everything are doing so notice that how it's attaching and it's doing the script um, it's doing its thing the controller is but he's not animating so that means and then we know we, we didn't expect it to because the animations, like I said, are set up for generic and he's a humanoid. There's no way to set him up to have her same bone structure unless you go and recreate the model and, and name the bones uh, similar things. It's easier just to go ahead and do this. So let's save. Save project. And what we want to do is look at um, her again. Turn, well, we don't have to. We can look at her controller, and if you just click on it here, I've just got her turned off, but I can select her in the scene. Look at her controller. Here's the controller right here. And if you double click on that, then you can see the state machine that drives it. Okay. Um, each one of these, and it's a pretty complicated state machine, but it's a good way to learn how state machines work. Um, these um, 
this is it's just a flow so in other words there's this uh, exit entry on entry uh, the first thing it'll consider is respawn which is based on some um, script and a perimeter that will uh, determine if it's um, needs to animate so then when it respawns it automatically goes into this idle animation or idle state machine which has an airborne, a melee combat, and a locomotion idle. Double click on that. Here's the idle state machine. Go back out to the base layer. And from there you can go into airborne, locomotion, and melee combat. When you get into these, um, you get into, and here's another any state. So any of the states will exit into her death, depending on how she dies. And then begin respawn, which goes back to respawn. So you see how it sort of connects up uh, where she's hurt. Any state goes into hurt and can go into, you see the flow of the transitions. So if you ever want to play with these, um, start simple. Uh, there's plenty of documentation on how to go about building these. But what we want to do is we want to take her, this Ellen uh, animator, make a copy of it, call it Bender. And then we want to take... Um, the animation, so if you look at, let's find one, yeah, this, no, that's a blend tree. Ellen Death, I think, has a simple animation. Uh, when you click on that, some of these will be blend trees, some of these will be just a straight motion, because there there's only one motion and there's no need for a blend. Uh, when you select that, you'll see that up here in the art and characters in Ellen, um, there's some animated, there's some FBX animations. If you click on those FBX animations, you see their rig is set to generic. Okay, we don't want to change her um, animations, which is all the stuff that's in this folder. We want to create copies of these, go and convert them all to humanoid, take our new state machine here and then go link up all the animations in the state machine so that this the new bender state machine will work with humanoid rig animations and then it'll just work okay so let's go through that process um, go back to our scene um, let's go and make a couple of duplicates so in this we'll just do uh, since we've got our animations selected right click on one of them, doesn't matter which, and say show and explore. And then from there, you see that um, there's characters, there's Ellen, let's copy her. And we will paste, call this Bender um, Animations even though we're not going to change the name inside. So now we have copies of um, all of the Ellen animations. These are those. Let's go, and when we come back in, it's going to go and think about it, because we've basically made a bunch of copies of these FBXs. And then we can go back out. Once they're done updating. Go into characters. Now we have Bender animations. Open that. And inside of Bender animations, we have all of these Ellen animations. If you select them all, go under Rig up here in the inspector. Just set them to humanoid. And oh, copy from other avatar because there was no, I had it set up wrong when I set this humanoid. You want to say create from this model so it'll it'll use the bones that are there and try to match to that. Um, then apply. Sorry. Um, so it's going to go and redo it. <laughs> um, so we've got all these animations. Um, we don't want to mess with them. These are custom animations that were set up, but by converting them to mechanim humanoid form, and we can transfer their motion from her character, her animation, her rig style, to his rig style. That's the goal for this. Um, it's a little bit roundabout, but it's, a, it's um, the only way that I know of to easily convert uh, generic rig setups to 
uh, something that's kind of a little more universal as far as humanoids go. So once this is done, now everything's good. They're all humanoid. You can just double check by clicking on any one of them and see that it's humanoid. And if you just open it up and then select the animation, you'll still see that it just works. Okay. Um, so now that's set. Let's check her avatar. Select her animator, the state machine here. We want to uh, oh, show and explore and copy. And then paste. And call this one Bender Controller. And it can be, um, we could even make it generic or humanoid. That's probably a more apt description. Uh, LN controller. So now any character that we set up, um, yeah, humanoid Ellen. Let's make it Ellen humanoid. That way we know. Um, the animations that we're setting up are set up for the original Ellen, but it's a humanoid rig. Okay, so when we come back in here, and now we have that on him. We can now go select his character and apply Ellen humanoid. And it won't work still because this Ellen humanoid, just by copying it, it still is targeting the original Ellen animations, which are set up for a generic rig. Um, but now that we have his this this character, uh, we can double click, go through, and so now we have access to uh, the state machine and the animations that it's targeting. So just double check. So on the respawn, it's got this Ellen spawn animation. Click on the target, and you'll see there's another Ellen spawn here. Select that one. Close it. Now, if you look at, click on this and see that it's targeting that Ellen spawn, which is in Bender animations. We know that we're targeting the um, character that's been set up for a humanoid rig. Okay. So now we got to go through and set up all these state machines. So I'm going to go, um, I'll do it on one of the um, more complicated. So there's no motion on this begin respawn. Ellen Death has Ellen Death, so we can just go and double that one. Double check to make sure that, yeah, it's in Bender. And Hurt has a Hurt Blend Tree. It's the motion. So if you double click on this, now you're into a Blend Tree. Select that, and this is where you get access to all the animations that it's targeting. Uh, you can select Ellen hit front, left. Just make sure you use the same name. They should be right next to each other. Just click the one that it's not. And then you'll see that now you're in the bender animations. So let's do this one. Ellen hit front. Uh, Ellen hit front right. Ellen hit front left, or Ellen hit left. I'm going to hit right, back left, back. You can see how they kind of do animations in all directions, so it's sort of rotating around her. Back right. That's all of them. Um, just double check that they're all targeting the bender animations now by clicking on them and see, you'll see where it says bender animations here. So now those are all humanoid rig. And to get back to um, this, the original or the base state tree, you're in hurt here. Just go back to base layer up here. So we were on hurt, which we've modified. Now that can go into airborne state machine, which is um, a blend tree. So double click. And then there's airborne, which will have, oh, it's another state machine. <laughs> Um, select these. 
You can see how the airborne stuff is really kind of complicated in terms of how it's set up. And um, so if you slide, you can see how she changes directions and you're sliding through the state machine here. Um, so let's go and fix the animations. Goes down. That was goes down too that we just changed. That was goes down. Jump peak. And goes up. Goes up. And off. Let's make sure we got them all. If you watch the bender animations. I'm just clicking through them to make sure. Yep. Okay, then if you go back out, make sure that everything, yep. Go back out to the base. So we just did airborne there. Here's landing. Double click. You have a landing, which is a landing tree. Same thing. think that's everything that's in bender so we got this yeah we moving around this way um, I think that's everything now we can go and test it uh, let's make sure he's t targeting Ellen humanoid now save save project and he should animate so you, you could see the character and you see how his head sort of dislocates from his body, but now he animates. It's kind of interesting to see how his head moves because it sort of looks like he's, um, he, he works. So he can jump, swing. We have to work on that. We have to go and attach the, um, I forgot to set the um, staff has a script and it needs to um, target the hand so it's targeting her hand which is in her character um, so we need to target his left hand which should just be called hand.l right here on him We'll be able to check here in a sec and see. Yep, it opens up his hand.l. So, um, hit sound is targeting. Yep. Okay. Staff joint end attack root. That's on the staff. Um, and then the hit particle system. It's pulling in. All right, all that should work. Let's see if he works now. We'll fix his um, avatar here in a sec, where the head disrupts. So now the staff is attached to his hand. You can. All right, so it works. Let's just fix. So you can see what I'm talking about. See how his head sort of floats off of his body. I kind of. It looks rather funny, but. Um, I want to um, fix that. So it's really easy to fix. If you select uh, his character here, not the skin, but the whole avatar, and then select, get back to his avatar, go into configure, save, and all the bones are green, which is good. Um, you just want to go into the muscle settings. 
and basically it's the body. Um, spine forward, so you can see where his head dislocates. So if you just go and set this and zero it out so that that spine doesn't do anything in that direction, now his head won't dislocate. And the spine left and right, same thing. So if you just zero those, that should fix that. And twist will be fine. That's okay. Um, now, in the head, you might want to fix it so that uh, his it can't uh, rotate his uh, chin down into his body. It may or may not, but that can happen. So um, if you don't want that to happen, basically you just need to like shorten the rotation. So set it to its extreme and then start pulling it until it's fixed. Same thing in the opposite direction. Something like that. Now, because it's the neck and the head can also rotate, you may want to um, fix it for the head as well. It'll still collide, but you just don't it won't as collide as bad. Go the opposites. Um, those are fine. Then you get to the head nod. Same thing. Just pull that up. And then fold them back. Okay, fix this. Um, same thing on the side. Not the turn, but the tilts. Okay. And you can do this as much as you want. You can set it up on the arms as well because they're, you know, his torso is kind of wide. And uh, depending on, because her body's narrow, you kind of want to go through and make sure you limit. Uh, the ups and downs. So if you did the left arm, the arm in, you see how it collides inside the body. You just set it to that extreme and then pull it till it doesn't. So let's make it 40 just for an even round number. And fix that. This one, same thing. Um, probably want to pull it out to like there. Let's make that Let's just make it 70. So by limiting these, it's sort of like fixing the possibility that uh, her animations will cause him to look weird. Forearm stretch is another one you want to fix, um, where the arm can collide, kind of close on itself. So um, make it probably like 55. And then we'll just do the same thing on the right arm. So we look at left arm up and down, it's negative 40. And front to back was negative 70. And the forearm stretch. 55 and that's it all right so now that's done don't forget to apply it and then say done we can check him out so when he lands notice his neck isn't bad and when he runs his head doesn't dislocate anymore now the last thing is, is to get the uh, camera targeting him. So if you, let's see, the camera rig, uh, you can see where it says follow Ellen transform and look at head target. You just need to go and get it to follow bender, which is probably up here, or armature, you can try that. 
and then target the other, the white head target, which is in hint. Let's see if there's anything about the camera brain or controller. Yeah, they're not targeting anything, so that's good. All right, now it should follow him around. So we're looking at his body. There's his character when we run. Jump. So we may want to lower that head animation. It's a little bit high. All right, so that's good. Um, shift and can we walk? Um, yeah, let's fix that real quick. So all you have to do to fix like the targeting of the camera that they look at is select him and his head target and we'll just put it down in the uh, it's also true that um, he's a little bit tall anyway he was bigger than her like if you turn her on you can see a big difference in the um, she's floating off the ground and he's touching the ground so he's a lot bigger um, so you can just take his character hit R and scale it to uh, be about the same size. So we will look and see. Uh. And then oh, it's animating her because she's turned on. Let's. Uh, I'm thinking that this, whatever this is, this null reference is what's causing it so that it's not working with the controller. Just need a 3D game kit, light scripts, audio, random audio player. That's what's causing the problem. So wherever that's targeted here, one of these is set up to, um, uh, the Allen shield that's the problem right here uh, so um, real quick there's this uh, object that's in both of these and it's basically when she gets hurt but there's actually some scripts on it um, that target uh, meshes that target her mesh in particular so uh, what you need to do is go and see where these elements it says um, we, the material is fine but it's the Ellen body and Ellen hips is what we need to target with. We want to target um, Bender here, that guy. And we want it to, the root bone, to be root and that should work. That's probably what was wrong with it. Let's just check these other and make sure. So in audio sources, respawn particles should be fine. The staff, let's make sure hit sound. That's in its audio source and swing sound set up there. Okay, good. And trail effect there's nothing there head target didn't have anything okay we should be good let's save see projects and we're still getting null reference audio random audio player we just have to figure out where that's not Staff is his camera. Footsteps um, is under audio source. 
Oh, it's under theirs, though. We've got to target the other, so we do need to change these. Sorry, my bad. Uh, because she's turned off. So let's do be yeah, the white versions. That's why, because they were turned off, because she was. And... I think that's it. Let's clear these and try again. Yeah, he's working. Good. All right, so you get you get the idea. Um, obviously, you can hear that it's playing her audio. You could go and record different audio and just target the uh, audio sources with different audio files. Uh, I'll leave that to you. And that's the end of this tutorial. I will do another tutorial that talks about um, how the um, Pro Builder tools work, and I'll link to that uh, to this. If you have any questions or comments, just leave them in the comments.